So having high blood sugar is just known to accelerate aging. There's no question about it. But th there's a couple of reasons. The, okay. the, there's a, a very simple reason and a very um, I guess practical explanation, which is that the glucose that circulates in your body can be used for fuel, but it, it can also inadvertently get attached to your proteins. And then when you've got this uh, glucose attached to proteins, they malfunction. So that's part of this buildup. That's why you want to have some intermittent fasting, restricted feeding to turn over these gl glucuronidated proteins. And one of the, the ways to measure diabetes is to measure the glucose that's attached to your hemoglobin, which mm -hmm. is an abundant protein in your red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And doctors take that measurement, it's called HbA1c, mm -hmm. that tells you how much glucose you've had in your body roughly for the last month. Because hemoglobin lasts for, in the body for about three months and it's turned over. Mm -hmm. And that number gives you a good idea of whether you've been eating badly and or you've got type 2 diabetes, which is the inability to utilize that blood sugar. That's why it's important to measure it even when you're young. Right. You don't want it to be going up and up and up. Mm -hmm. By the time it's, it, you're type 2 diabetic, it's often too late. Mm -hmm. And so I measure, I've been measuring mine for the last uh, over a decade. Okay. So that's one problem with glucose. It'll attach to proteins and make them malfunction. And it's a sign of type 2 diabetes. By the way, the numbers are based on the percentage of your hemoglobin that has glucose attached to it, stuck to it. Anything below 5% is really great. Between 5 and Seven is pre, and then uh, roughly, and then over seven, then you've got to you know be be worried, mm -hmm. and your doctor will start to treat it. And one of the drugs that's used will metformin. metformin. But but what's Im also important, I think, is to understand that there's probably another mechanism to how this is working because it's not just about blood sugar. By activating this AMPK, you actually I got to take it a real quick step back. Because there are three main things that keep us healthy when we feel hormesis or do hormesis. You've mentioned mTOR, which is sensing amino acids. Mm -hmm. The ones that I work on are called sirtuins. They measure NAD and a whole bunch of stress in the body, exercise, diet. The one that we're talking about is the third one, which is called AMPK, mm -hmm. and it registers the amount of energy in the body, glucose and chemical energy, which is called ATP, that mitochondria make. And as we get older, our body makes less and less energy, and AMPK is the control system. And AMPK is activated by a bunch of things, which uh, include being hungry and exercising or taking the drug metformin. <laughs> That's probably why they're all good for you, because it turns on these defenses. And so think of, think of your glucose as doing two things. One is sticking to proteins and wrecking the proteins, and you need to turn those over by fasting or eating less regularly. But also, if you always have sugar in your body, high levels, either diabetic or you're just eating cake every day, or, or sugar in your coffee, what you're doing is telling the body, there's an abundance right now. And your AMPK defenses are not turned on, unless you take metformin, which might bypass that. But what I try to do in my life is to turn on all of those three systems, the sirtuins with boosting NAD, AMPK by taking metformin and exercising, and then the mTOR, not taking an abundance of those three amino acids I mentioned, leucine, mm -hmm. isoleucine, valine. And together, I think they work as a system. We know they talk to each other. Tweak one, the other works. We don't know what the optimal combination is. Right. That I'm experimenting on myself. Right.